One of the big problems with social media is that it locks us into echo chambers. You actually have to force yourself to go find your political opponents and engage with them online to get a more balanced view of the world. So let's join America's ABC network as they take us to Kamala Harris's first ever campaign rally in Milwaukee. You can see Vice President Kamala Harris there stepping up to the mic, her first rally as a presidential candidate since President Biden dropped out. Let's listen in. Oh yeah, how you doing? All righty. You know, I'm so glad that Joe Biden asked us all to turn down the heat on the hate rhetoric in this campaign, to not use hype and generalizations to paint the other side as a pure evil threat to democracy. Kamala is clearly listening. So as Leah told you, before I was elected vice president, before I was elected United States senator, I was elected attorney general of the state of California and I was a courtroom prosecutor before then. And in those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. <laughs> Predators who abused women. Fraudsters who ripped off consumers. Cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. <laughs> Wow, okay, well, that sure has reset the tone to a friendlier one. You know, Americans love a show. They're far less cynical than we are. The video about Donald Trump's life that was shown at the Republican convention last week was so corny and cheesy, it almost made me want to throw up. It was like something from a 1950s movie theater newsreel, but they were deadly serious. But the Democrats, really are next level with all the Hollywood hype, the endless nice sounding statements that actually have zero substance whatsoever behind them. The sad thing is that they can win with that approach because the philosophy of the right wing is a tough love philosophy. We're all about personal responsibility, uh, competition, individual effort, winning and losing and then learning from the losing and winning again helping each other out, but only when a real need exists to do so, and to first of all try to help people help themselves. That's the philosophy of the sensible kind centre-right, and that is a hard sell. It's so much easier to be on the left where you can just say, oh, look at the poor people suffering, uh, let's just give them handouts, let's just give them more money, uh, or as they do nowadays with their woke culture, everyone is a victim, right? We can get everyone on side, even you. Uh, and you deserve and are entitled to something for nothing. I mean, who doesn't want to hear that? That is a very, very hard message to beat in a shallow political game and a soundbite media culture world. But we really do have to be careful of the echo chamber effect created by social media algorithms that are serving us up just more of what we already think and less of what we don't. To those on the center right, who are hoping for a Republican and a Trump Vance victory in the presidential elections in the US in November, the idea that Kamala Harris could beat Donald Trump seems like a far-fetched fantasy if you just stick to, you know, outside of politics online. A week ago, Donald had risen like a, a phoenix, had been resurrected from the ashes of attempted murder. He looked completely untouchable and unbeatable. But Kamala Harris actually can win. She's already a little bit ahead in some of the polls. Now, the very latest polls from Reuters with samples of around 1,000 people have got Harris about one to three percentage points ahead of Trump. The margin of error of those polls is about 3%, so that's really just neck and neck. But other larger polls of around 2,000 people taken in the last couple of days by Real Clear Politics, Big Village, and RMG Research have got Trump ahead by about one to two points on average. On personal approval, Kamala is at 51% disapproval and only 38% approval. So a lot of work to be done there. But things are only slightly better for Donald Trump with his unfavorability rating at 53% and his favorability at 42. So beware the false sense of security from social media algorithms. Everyone does not think like we do. Just as the left scoff at the right and call us deplorables and underestimate us, we too often forget that the left are powerful and influential 
and very well supported. Remember, they've spent 50 years getting control of all the major institutions of influence, the legacy media, the church, academia, universities, school education now, and of course, the main social and new media platforms. Not to mention the entire weight of the bureaucracy, the public servants. I mean, their very existence depends on the left winning government. So the whole thing is stacked against conservatives, libertarians and classical liberals. We can never become complacent. As Attorney General of California, I took on one of our country's largest for-profit colleges that was scamming students. Donald Trump ran a for-profit college that scammed students. As a prosecutor, I specialized in cases involving sexual abuse. Well, Trump was found liable for committing sexual abuse. As Attorney General of California, I took on the big Wall Street banks and held them accountable for fraud. Donald Trump was just found guilty of fraud on 34 counts. Right. Let's do a little fact checking there. The left love to do fact checking. So we'll do some fact checking of, of the left, shall we? Donald Trump was found in a civil case brought for political reasons by a New York jury to have sexually assaulted a woman in a department store. In fact, he wasn't found guilty of sexual assault. He was found guilty of battery. E.J. Carroll sued Trump for defamation and battery, not rape or sexual assault. And she was awarded $5 million in damages. The Democrats insist this was not a politically motivated lawfare attack. And it was not all about trying to financially handicap Trump. Then a jury found that Trump was liable for defamation against Carroll again, regarding remarks that he made after the first verdict. And they awarded her an additional $83 million in damages. A truly huge amount of money for defamation. And that was after she went on CNN and told the world that she thought rape was sexy. You don't feel like a victim. I was not thrown on the ground and ravished, which the word rape carries so many sexual connotations. This was not, this was not sexual. It just, it, it hurt. It just, what, it just, you know. Well, I think most people think of rape as a, I mean, it is a violent assault. It is not. I think most sexual. people think of rape as being sexy. Mm. Let's take a short break. Think of the fantasies. Mm. We're going to take a quick break. If you can stick around, we'll talk more on the other side. You're fascinating to talk to. <laughs> okay. So that was the sexual assault case that wasn't a sexual assault case. Check. Um, moving right along now to the, uh, to the 34 counts we keep hearing about, these 34 counts of fraud. What, what were these 34 counts exactly? Well, they all related to one alleged crime, that Trump made payments to his lawyer and logged them as payments to his lawyer for legal services when they were actually to reimburse the lawyer for a payment of hush money to Stormy Daniels, a porn star who claimed that she had sex with Trump, but which Trump has always denied. And why were there 34 counts? Oh, because the Democrat prosecutors decided there should be a count for every single thing related to the 11 transactions to make that single payment. 11 checks, 11 invoices, and 12 little entries in a record book. That adds up to 34. There's your 34 counts of fraud, folks. So even the number 34 is misinformation and disinformation. A complete lie that Kamala and the Democrats are very happy to repeat over and over and over again. And what about that woman, Stormy Daniels? Was, was she a real victim? Let's hear what she had to say to Bill Maher on his show in her own words. This is when I had Stormy on in 2018, and first I asked her why she had sex with Trump. Okay, but you say it's not a Me Too case. It is not a Me Too case. I mean, I wasn't uh, assaulted. I wasn't attacked or raped or coerced or blackmailed. They tried to shove me in the Me Too box to further right. their own agenda. And first of all, I didn't want any part of that because it's not the truth and I'm not a victim in that regard. That's not what she's saying now. No, 
In the recent case, she used all the Me Too buzzwords that Trump blocked her way and she was shaking and he was bigger and intimidating. It was a completely different story. But anyway, despite everyone with half a legal brain thinking that Trump had no chance of losing that case, the ruling went against him and the lawfare got the result it wanted. But just remember, every time Kamala says 34 counts, that it's actually just one offence, not 34 related to a hush money payment, which in and of itself isn't illegal, to stop her talking about a thing that nobody actually proven, has proven actually happened. If you ask me, the real villains and liars here are the people trying to make you think that Trump is guilty of a whole bunch of things that he isn't. But the sad reality is many people will fall for this. They will buy it. As Hitler's PR guy Goebbels famously said, just repeat the lie enough times and people will believe it to be the truth. And the bigger the lie, the better. People will believe it deep in their bones, in fact. It's fascinating. And that is why you will hear Kamala repeat these lines over and over and over again in the next few months if she becomes the final candidate for the Democrats. They're actually still hedging their bets a tiny little bit and seeing how she does before the Democratic Party's big national convention when they'll endorse the final candidate officially in August. But she is now almost certain to be the candidate. It seems nobody else wants to go up against Trump and would rather hold off until 2028. Although the Obamas have uh, still been pretty quiet about endorsing Kamala at the time that uh, we're putting the show together. Okay, so Kamala has had a nasty swipe at Trump. Uh, now we need some uh, we need some soft virtue signaling, you know, to uh, to make her seem all nice and fluffy again. Time to bring out the the billionaires and the evil corporations as villains, align them with Trump, and then we can make out that we are the ones who represent the people. But let's also make no mistake: this campaign is not just about us versus Donald Trump. This campaign is about who we fight for. This is about who we fight for. Just look at how we are running our campaigns. So Donald Trump is relying on support from billionaires and big corporations. And he is trading access in exchange for campaign contributions. On the other hand, we are running a people-powered campaign. Uh-huh, sure you are. I mean, honestly, if you're buying that line, folks, I've got a bridge to sell you. The modern left elites are so interconnected to big corporations and all this ESG and DEI stuff, and in Australia, through industry superannuation funds investing in those big corporations, uh, the connection between the left of politics and corporations, big ones, is, is not funny. The businesses that are getting screwed over are the small and medium enterprises, the small businesses. Anyway, it's time for a whole list of freebie giveaways, the usual left-wing political stuff that, uh, you know, hasn't changed for 150 years. We believe in a future where every person has the opportunity not just to get by, but to get ahead. <laughs> A future where no child has to grow up in poverty. Where every worker has the freedom to join a union. Where every person has affordable health care. Affordable child care. And paid family leave. We believe in a future where every senior can retire with dignity. Who can argue with any of that, hey? Eh? The left do it in every election and it works because the hidden assumption is the right don't care about those things. Well, we do. It's just that we're terrible at explaining how we're gonna get there that our desire for tax cuts and smaller government and less welfare and fewer handouts is to create a richer country that alleviates poverty, suffering, sickness and death. We are terrible at telling that story on the right. It's a much more difficult narrative, I get it, sure. 
It requires that the audience can think more than one step ahead. And apart from the people who watch this show, maybe that is a bit of a challenge, especially with the ABC crowd, but that is no excuse for not trying. Especially when all you have to compete with is this giant intellect. Um, we're looking at over 220 million Americans who just in the last several months died. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> you exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you. What else do we know about this population, 18 through 24? They are stupid. <laughs> that is why we put them in dormitories and they have a resident assistant. They make really bad decisions. I see our college students up there. <laughs> and let me just tell you, I love Gen Z. I don't know if something, you know, I love Gen Z. <laughs> so, okay, for the older adults, this is gonna be a humbling thing I'm about to share with you. If someone is 18 years old today, they were born in 2005. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, check that out. Think about that for a minute. <laughs> we must together, work together, to see where we are, where we are headed, where we are going, and our vision for where we should be, but also see it as a moment, yes, to together address the challenges and to work on the opportunities. We have to know that sometimes people will open the door for you and leave it open, sometimes they won't. And then you need to kick that fucking door down. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, the left definitely have the nicer sounding narrative, um, giving away all the freebies. They, they never explain how they're gonna pay for all that though, other than kooky economic theories about printing more money endlessly as if nobody loses out when you do that. But bigger government, more of them is always the answer. And it sounds nice that mummy and daddy and nanny state will take care of me and my retirement and all my healthcare needs. So it will and it does work, unfortunately. Hope you enjoyed that clip. The other side is your weekly analysis of the media's best news and commentary without the woke and we need your support. Please make sure you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on X at The Other Side on X. It's all totally free to do that, but we could always do with your financial support too. So if you'd like to make a donation, click the super thanks button on YouTube with a little dollar sign and thanks on it right under the video frame below. Even a $2 donation will really help us. And if you're watching on YouTube, do check out the full episode that this clip came from right here.